So we're back with Tin from the EVJ lab, and we wanted to show off some of the, the um, well, this Frankenstein cards because I guess you know you look at like a Kingpin PC. <laughs> I didn't know Linus was in the room. Before that, this video is brought to you by MSI's X570 motherboard lineup. MSI's X570 motherboards will be available on July 7th with the launch of Ryzen 3000 series CPUs and now include flagship brands like Godlike, Ace, and Creation. The MSI Edge will be among the more affordable mid-range motherboards, appealing for most Ryzen 3000 builds, while the Godlike has more overclocking support, an abundance of LEDs, an OLED, and a server-grade PCB for improved PCIe for signal integrity. Keep an eye out for MSI's X570 motherboards for the Ryzen 3000 launch, or learn more at the link in the description below. You start with like a Kinpin PCB, and you look at that, it's got kind of a lot of the stuff I guess you do for these, yeah. except in a much cleaner fashion. So no, it's actually pretty clean already. So this is what we do for the extreme uh, VRM testing. So I connected extra copper plane, extra very heavy gauge wires. So was this, a, this is a reference PCB, right? Yes, this is reference 1080 PCB, okay. one of the ES samples uh, we got during the development phase of this product, and also like 1080 uh, Kingpin edition. So it has <laughs> extra wires, so we can connect the scope and do like that load line testing. We so these are probe points you hooked up? Yes, these are probe okay. points for the DMM, so you can like see the adapter right there, so you can shove the normal probe. Are and they do the soldered test. to like a... A V core. Yes, this MLCC is uh, soldered to the V core pads right behind the GPU, so it's like w one of the places where the cap go, and these probes they connect the same location, and this was connected to uh, custom hardware to monitor, so we can look over time like run different uh, tests like benchmarks, 3D mark, uh, different stress test, and measure actually load line or well, like how big it is. Do we need to reduce it or increase it? And there are also extra caps, like these different color ones. So we try different uh, uh, amount of caps can affect how much noise you have on the rail. So like so we were to test and like, in. okay, you don't want too much because otherwise your VRM will be too slow and very heavy to drive uh, all those capacitance. And you don't want too less, otherwise your uh, voltage will drop too much. So yeah. when, you, when you're doing this, when you get the reference boards in, how much of this is is um, trying to prep for the extreme overclocking stuff versus just research for the new GPUs? Well, actually, it aligns uh, in time almost like close together because we still need to do all the VRM testing mm -hmm. and power tuning and find out what the limits are on the VRM side. And then that transitions into the extreme overclocking. So I'll be working on this card maybe like for a couple of weeks, make sure that all the power is uh, clear and like we can understand what's going on. And then after that, I'll pass the card to Wins and he will mount the LN2 container and run for the extreme overclocking and right. see like how high how does it behave. Again. And then this process iterates in a cycle. So we repeat like, uh, like okay, we get like 2400, for example. Right. And then we want to run higher. We'll maybe try better VRM. So what is this foil stuff you've got coming up here? Or, oh, it's not foil. What is this? <laughs> That's the very thick uh, copper plate. So instead of running oh. <laughs> 100 wires like okay. this, I just use the copper plate, connect directly to the VRM. Yeah. And then this will translate into something like this one. So this is the same 1080 Ti card, but with connected with the ePower classified. So is this what, when people say like zombie mod, is that yes, what this, this is? Yes, this is precisely okay. the so-called zombie mod because you have separate PCB, like it's completely different piece. And this is just the VRM. So all the power is supplied now from this external VRM to the GPU and GPU handles like the memory, memory power that's still from the main PCB. Okay. And we still have the like probe wires, different uh, auxiliary voltage controls and extra caps. So extra caps on the back and then what was this one? That was uh, actually the voltage pro point for the memory rail. So okay. like, the memory shape goes there and we can do the extra testing for memory. And Is this this an old EVG because you guys used to have like power boards, didn't you? Or yes, like so this is actually fourth revision, and we already have the new one, which okay. is still available. The EVGA classified uh, ePower Five. 
So th this one, you need to use the EV bot externally to do the control and monitoring, but uh, new ones have everything integrated, so you can use uh, like all the controls on the board already. You right. don't need any external hardware. So how much, when you're working on this stuff, like that, uh, that other card we were looking at a second yeah. ago, how long does that take you to kind of figure out when, when you get a new prototype in or a new reference model in? Um, it's usually like within days. Okay. Like, uh, because we know like this, this process is not uh, something we reinvent for every new card, but it's like uh, we apply the same knowledge for every generation. So we started for, from like 580 and 680, like uh, attaching the external VRMs and then like every generation, we just repeat the same thing and like see what the difference is. Because usually on the power delivery side, like the overall concept is the same. Like you take the 580 GTX uh, card, or you take the RT modern RTX 2080 Ti. The idea is the same; it's just different implementation. Right. So uh, a lot of it, then, I guess you're doing some preliminary research for a new line, like when when the new GPU. Yeah, is because like in. even like from the when we d d decide what solution, what VRM solution we will use on the new custom card, mm -hmm. like FTW or the Kingpin card, then we will need to know before before we start design phase, we need to know like, oh, okay, we need to 16 phases or 12 phases or 10 phases or how many we need to handle the power together for the normal use and for the extreme overclocking with winds. Right. So that's, uh, we need to kind of find the balance which you still can implement on the PCB and have the normal stock cooler. So it like production. Yeah, so I guess some, some of this is back to like, you know, what's the point of buying like the higher end PCBs? So not even just KP, but just you talk like FTW3 or XE Ultra, some, some non-reference design. Because I guess uh, in theory, if you're you, you could take a reference model and get, it sounds like pretty far along the, yeah, the but process. there is uh, like always some difference. Like usually we get better results on our custom cards right. because you don't have so extra parasitics and so extra noise from the all these zombie mods and and also this it's not like this happens instantly either. This is yeah, this takes maybe like a couple of hours to do it and then actually to test it's more much more than that maybe yeah. like days and years of experience to get to that <laughs> well, point. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a couple hours, not like go home and try and get it done in a couple hours. It's, yeah, it's, it's one <laughs> of those things you don't try at home. <laughs> right, right. Uh, cool. So these are which which were these? This is a 1080. This is 1080 card. Okay. Yes. It's a 1080 zombie mod card, and then uh, another 1080 with without the zombie board, but with a bunch of probes and wires sticking off of yep. it. And I guess we will get some close-up B-roll shots of that. But that's a look behind the scenes of some of the engineering that mad scientists do at the companies uh, before getting the products out. So give you a close up look at what happens before you get the fully packaged, nice looking card. I'm not saying this doesn't look nice, Tim. I don't mean to insult your work, well, <laughs> but it's, it's a mess. What it is. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the card. Thanks for watching. Check back for additional videos with Tim from the lab. You can subscribe for more. And thank you for joining me. Sure. We'll see you next time.